Yawa, yawa. Galang Biren. Nam jo baby di ma di mil ni ang di menggali jagan ba. Wara mayan man kuyen di na. Mil yala bitki, mil yala bitki berpi, yala kiri, yala wian, yala virgin, yala yungo. Ito na tanam beli kurumba, katurubol jagan ka kurul pa ba ni. My name is Vanessa Fisher. I come from Sherbeg. Um, I grew up under the Act. I'm here because I got countrymen uh, kinship relationship to Turubu people. My father's people, mother's father's people, come from the Brisbane Valley. We are Dungibara. That means the river people, river Bora. Tukulwa, Kaesk, Kui, all the way up to the Black Butt Ranges, uh, Emu Creek. That's where my grandfather was taken to, uh, from to Debian Creek. My grandmother, my father's mother, born in 1896, taken to Sherbeg in 1904 from Georgetown, hence the name Georgetown. We are named after places that we come from. But yes, everybody here speaks an Aboriginal language. Oh, not Aboriginal. Guri, Anangu, Yulanyu, uh, ba Bama. It doesn't matter where you go in the country, you will speak one of several languages. Nunga, Nanga. Anangu, Yulunyu, you name it, I'm Guri. Um, I'm not an adjective, Aboriginal is an adjective, okay. Um, but I'm not. But Dundaldan, Ganinagari, Ni Biningini. Thank you, ladies. Oh, men, nah, Dundaldan, woman, ga man. We don't have a word for ladies, okay. So Dunda and Dan, man, thank you for Biningini Nai for listening to me. And uh, I hope you enjoy your time here because I hear voices in the um, audience and I hear places like uh, Kanamala, I got Kuma bloodlines. I got Gungri bloodlines. Actually, my great, great grandfather was named Maranor. His name, which Marin is duck and Nor is the egg. Okay, so he was Maranor and um, all the way from from West, Aro West Aroma to into Gungri over to the language has no boundaries, but yeah, everybody speaks language, eh? Comment tell you? Just a little français? Comment ça? Eh? You know, and it's easy to pick up if you listen. And thank you. Thank you for um, um, listening to me and enjoy your afternoon. And safe travels for all you people, eh? Yenandi na jaganga when you're traveling back on country. Yenandi means to go, Jagan means country. Jinangju eh? is your footprints in the ground as you travel. Thank you. <laughs> Just before I go, I want to sing a song that I grew up with. It doesn't belong to me, but it belongs to a particular family that is Gabi, Gabi Waka, okay? And, um, it's about a man who was taken from his country and he wants to go back home into his country, like a lot of us. Um, we got no country. Native title isn't land rights. I'm waiting for the day that I'll get my country back. And um, that's gonna happen not by you, but by other means of who brought us into this country, into this existence in the first place, our creator, okay? He has many names within the language groups, Biril, Bayami, you know, you name it, he's got many names, or B Bira, you know? So he has many names, but in our languages. And remember, we are Guris, Guri Birins, or Guris, or Anangu, or whatever. Now this song goes like this. Gari ni na nami, jagan yon gon yon gu. Gari ni na nami, gari ni na nami, jagan yon gon yon gu. Gari ni na nami, jagan yon gon yu. Gari ni na nami, jojo bobarono. Gari ni na nami, gari ni na nami, jojo bobarono. Gari ni na nami, jojo bobarono. Gari ni na nami, gayan maranga gai. Gari ni na nami, gari ni na nami, gayan maranga gai. Gari ni na nami, gayan maranga gai. 
Gari ni na na mi jo jo bo na jagen yon gon yon go gari ni na na mi gari ni na na mi jagen yon gon yon go gari ni na na mi jagen yon gon yo country I go I go thank you. Auntie Vanny, thank you so much for acknowledging the traditional owners and welcoming us to country. Thank you for joining us with your beautiful granddaughter as well. We know you have to slip away. Thanks again, Auntie Vanny. Well, now it's my pleasure to, to welcome you to these annual awards. I'm Kay McGrath from Seven News and various other places. And it's my pleasure to be your MC for these fabulous awards once again. Uh, we've got a great crew joining us here in the State Library in Brisbane, and we've got others who are joining us online from warmer parts of the state of Queensland. Uh, forgive me if I miss any of you out, but I know that we have plenty of people here from Brisbane City Council. Uh, we've got Carpentaria. Woo! Ipswich, Douglas Shire, yay! Woo! -hoo. Morton Bay, Redland, lovely Noosa, Sunshine, Co <laughs> Sunshine Coast, Scenic Rim, and Western Downs, and Mary and the crew from King Arroy are back. <laughs> and I was reliably informed it was 1.2 minus 1.2 degrees, I believe, uh, up there this morning. So welcome to each and every one of you. We are here to celebrate the good work of local councils over the last 12 months. There are nine categories uh, this afternoon. After that, of course, we'll have a chance to network out the back, uh, have a cool drink and a conversation. We're going to acknowledge the teams and the projects that have made it as finalists of the seven awards for excellence. And then we'll announce the runners up and the winner of the Queensland Australasian Management Challenge. So I do hope that you're feeling the excitement. You've got your fingers and your toes and your legs and whatever else you can cross or cross in the hope that uh, your project will be featuring on the podium this afternoon. Now, I've had a bit of a promotion this time around. I have the pleasure of announcing the Young Manager of the Year Award. This isn't usually included in the program, but because there has been no Inspire conference in 2023, I get this special task. And giving me a hand with this is Matt Hogno of Brighter Super. Would you welcome Matt to the stage, please? <laughs> That's going to be a tough act to follow. I don't sing, by the way. I'm not doing. You don't want. You do not want to hear that. <laughs> hey, who's the look? It wasn't a routine joke. It was like serious. <laughs> um, thank you, Kay. Uh, thank you for that introduction. Um, well, here we are. The 2023 uh, LGMA Local Government uh, Awards for Excellence. And what an honour to be introducing the first award of the afternoon, which, uh, as Kay pointed out before, is the Young Manager of the Year. I just want to quickly say to Peter and her fabulous team at LGMA, um, I just wanted to firstly say a huge thank you to you guys um, from and on behalf of Brighter Super um, for having us as part of these awards uh, once again this year uh, and to acknowledge the brilliant work that you all do um, both for and around uh, local government uh, within Queensland. How the time flies, everybody. It doesn't feel, it's a well, that is a well-worn, um, I guess, figure of speech, but it's very true. And it doesn't feel like 12 months ago that we were here for the 2022 awards and how quickly that's gone. Um, what I do remember more than anything over that 12 month period, however, um, and the last time that I was here and that we, uh, we were part of these awards, um, was that our super fund was known, well, known to most of you in this room by a very different name, which obviously was LGIA super. Uh, and that we're on the verge of officially launching at that point in time, uh, our new merged organisation with Energy Super, um, which now became what you see on the board behind you there is Brighter Super and the name that you see today. In just over a week's time, or just under a week's time I should say, um, we're about to complete the next stage of that particular journey, 
uh, with the transfer of more than 130,000 Suncorp superannuation members across to our fund as, and then under that brighter super banner. Um, just a fun fact for you guys uh, and some of the stats that we're looking at um, for everybody here and who's uh, watching this online. Um, as a result of that, Brighter Super is now the fourth largest uh, financial services organisation headquartered in Queensland um, with around 259,000 members and around $30 billion in assets under management. So we're growing and we're growing quite quickly and that's, and that's a good thing. Um, but most importantly, whilst we're doing that, whilst we're growing, while we're becoming yeah, a much bigger organisation. The one thing we've never changed is the way that we do business and the way that we've looked after local government employees right across the length and breadth of Queensland since 1965. So that's a long time, that's 58 years of looking after people's retirement outcomes, looking after their super and looking after their futures for both them and their families. In fact, the way we look after our members across all 77 of the local government areas um, is only gonna get better. Um, so I'm going to throw a few quick stats at you right now. The main reason for that especially is I know that a lot of people in this room and who are online are members of the fund, so there's some interesting stuff going on that we're doing. So just quickly, um, each and every council now has a dedicated Brighter Super Relationship Manager attached to their council. We've now got more than 40 in-field superannuation representatives who are across the whole state at any time, at any given time. We've con uh, put on uh, more than 20 new contact centre staff uh, to deal with the increase in calls and contact with our members. We conducted almost 5,000 super health checks for our members so far this financial year and 13,000 employee interactions during our workplace visits right across the length and breadth of the state. On top of that, we've had almost 6,000 attendees uh, at our seminar and webinar series events so far again uh, during this financial year. Plus, and this is a bit of a gloat, we get to say this one, um, Brighter Super is currently the number two performing fund, uh, being judged by super ratings in the My Super option uh, so far this financial year. And we've just been judged as Money Magazine's best value My Super product for 2023. So there's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of stuff we're very proud of. And if you are a member, uh, we think things look pretty good. If you're not a member, well, you know where to find us. Um, we're always up for a chat. So always keen to talk to anyone who's interested. But anyway, that's certainly enough about us. Today is about acknowledging and celebrating the outstanding achievements, initiatives, contributions made by local government throughout Queensland. I would like to congratulate each and every one of the nominees and finalists for the awards here today and wish you all the very best as the afternoon unfolds. On a personal note, um, back in April this year, I also had the pleasure of being invited along by LGMA uh, to be an observer at the Australasian Management Challenge Day in Brisbane. And I have to say, I was completely blown away by the levels of enthusiasm, strategic thinking, creativity, and the dedication uh, to the task at hand demonstrated by the teams, by all the teams uh, that took part on that, uh, on that really great day uh, here in Brisbane. I've got no doubt whatsoever that those levels of enthusiasm, energy, and ability will be on full display across the awards categories across the rest of the afternoon. So without any further delay, Back to you, Kay, and to tell us more about award recipient for okay. this year. Thank you very much, Matt. As a woman of a certain vintage, I take a very close interest in the topic of superannuation. <laughs> Congratulations on, on your brand, Thank Brighter you. Super, Brighter Future. He didn't sing, ladies and gentlemen, but he gave us some impressive stats. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Let's move on and find out who the Young Manager of the Year is. Now, to win this award, an individual must have demonstrated leadership, obviously, and management excellence and commitment in the sector. This is somebody that council has identified as a standout in their role and across the sector. They were looking for a range of qualities, such as visionary leadership, innovation, best practice, superior interpersonal skills, contribution to the community and region, professional development, and effective use of systems and resources. Now, I've been given permission to tease you just a little bit by slowly revealing the details of the winner's achievements. Some of you are going to work out pretty quickly who they are. Others, you'll be in the dark. You'll have no clue. And it's always interesting to see how long it takes for the winner to actually twig. So, let me tell you a little bit more. The 2023 Young Manager of the Year 
is a highly capable manager renowned for innovative thinking and a focus on continuous improvement. Always seeking better ways to do business and understanding and knowledge of the needs across council allows this manager to offer solutions across the whole of council for the benefit of the community. In their roles, this officer has revamped council agendas, optimised library operations, undertaken significant council policy reviews, contributed strongly to the delegation uh, review process, worked on the implementation of authorisation cards, organised community events. That's just to name a few of their contributions. This person's also played a pivotal role with the disaster management team, including making substantial improvements to evacuation plans, where understanding of the community and its needs allowed the officer to add some pretty significant value. A supportive leader, our young manager of the year, is a strong advocate for staff development and has supported staff to achieve learning qualifications. Practicing what's preached, this officer has taken the time to gain tertiary quals while working. And since beginning as a trainee back in 2011, has taken on new roles when need arises and then gone above and beyond to learn those roles and the needs of the team, excelling at every stage. During a recent flooding event, the most significant the community has seen, our young manager of the year applied considerable interpersonal skills to lead the team and the community in a highly charged situation. She, it's like a gender reveal, isn't it? <laughs> she was able to make sound decisions quickly despite the rapidly changing uh, environment, delegating tasks with clarity and precision, as most women do, and utilising her knowledge of individual strengths, she was able to leverage staff skills to achieve strategic, strategic outcomes. She was instrumental in persuading residents to evacuate in a timely manner and organised helicopter transfers of nearly 100 residents, and she did that in just two days. The nominators say that the successful evacuation was a testament to her leadership, influence and communication skills. A senior member of the SES and Fire Brigade in her shire, another clue. Uh, she's also recently gained qualifications as a commissioner for declarations to help out community members. Ethical, professional and with a strength of character that belies her age, our young manager of the year is also a genuinely kind and generous person. While operating in a remote area of Queensland in a council with a large land mass and small population, she's worked her way up to the role of corporate services and governance manager. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, let me introduce the 2023 Young Manager of the Year from Berkshire Council, Madison Marshall. Matt's going to present Madison with her certificate. And Lucas is our paparazzi again this year. Lovely Lucas. So we'll capture the moment. And Madison, how do you, how do you feel about saying a few words? Uh, very nervous. Um, <laughs> I really don't like public speaking, to be honest, but... Uh, very honoured to uh, receive this award and be recognised by my council. So, thank you, guys. Brilliant. Well done. That's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much. And congratulations again, Madison. You're simply the best. Better than all the rest. A little tribute to Tina Turner there too. Now, let's move on to the awards categories. And you can follow along uh, with the awards. There's a magazine, if you haven't already dived into your goodie bags, 
um, and you can read along with me if you like. Lots of detail in there, which is really valuable if you would like to make contact with some of our finalists. One of the aims, of course, of these awards is to share knowledge and learning so that councils around the state uh, don't have to reinvent the wheel, play, plough the same paddock over and over again. So we really encourage you to reach out. But of course, most importantly, we're recognising and celebrating the outstanding work that's being undertaken. It's been a difficult few years recently. You don't need, need me to tell you that. But despite that, local government continues to come up with new and innovative and impactful ideas. Every year, the judge's job is a tough one. In every category, there are projects implemented in vastly different environments, as you'd imagine, and they meet unique community needs. What our clever judges have done is identify the project which is best exemplar of the category and the one in which council has done the best in the context in which it operates. Sadly, as usual, um, a lot of great projects won't get a mention this afternoon, but that gives you an idea of the quality and the breadth of the nominations. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask you to thank our 2023 judges, Alice Shearing, Deborah College, Greg Meek, Jeff Wilcock, and Thea Mulheron, ably led by panel leads Chris Rose and Brett DeChastel. So thank you to our clever judges. Now let's get underway. Our first category is Excellence in Sustainability. For this award, the project or initiative has enhanced the long-term sustainability of council and or the community. This could be through more sustainable use of human, uh, financial and other resources, or it might be related to environmental sustainability. There are four finalists this year, and unusually, uh, they are all about environmental sustainability. Finalist number one, Cairns, Australia's green capital, courtesy of Cairns Regional Council. Climate change, as we know, is impacting communities across Queensland. The Cairns Climate Change Strategy 2030 will build on achievements and actions to date and guide Council's climate actions for the next decade. The new strategy will support the community to progress towards Queensland's emissions reduction target of 30% below 2005 levels by 2030 and net zero emissions by 2050, protecting the region. The strategy has delivered a 46% emissions reduction and 2.8 megawatts of on-site solar is already in operation, and there's a commitment to net zero emissions by 2030 and 100% renewable energy for its 80 largest facilities. They're aiming for 2024. Nestled between World Heritage listed Great Barrier Reef and the wet tropics, Cairns has a natural advantage when it comes to claiming the title of Australia's green capital, and by integrating climate action, environmental stewardship and economic development, Cairns Regional Council is strengthening the, linkage, the linkages between people and planet to accelerate the region's transition to low carbon, renewable energy and nature-based future. Our second finalist, Hinchinbrook Shire Council with coconut reduction strategy. Sands, waves, coconut palms, it all sounds rather appealing, doesn't it? However, beware. The humble but deadly coconut palm is at the centre of a bitter dispute. Coconut palms pose serious liability risks. They're highly invasive, they displace native vegetation and they contribute to shoreline erosion. So, Hinch and Brookshire Council reviewed the current and emerging coconut palm situation as part of its financial and foreshore management planning process. As a result, they adopted a strategy to reduce ongoing maintenance costs and public liability associated with the introduced species. After extensive community engagement, the new strategy has achieved positive financial and environmental sustainability outcomes for the Shire reducing ongoing maintenance costs from a whopping $120,000 a year to approximately $33,000 per annum. 
Council will progressively replace removed coconut palms with native vegetation to help ensuring up the coastal dunes along the foreshores and reduce erosion at local beaches. Our third finalist is the Smart Water Metering Program Strategic Plan and Community Engagement by Isaac Regional Council. Now, Council is working hard to reduce the impact of limited availability of raw water within the region, with most townships either relying on bore water or water that's sourced from outside the region. An innovative smart water metering program, strategic plan and community engagement, has been successful in reducing the total water consumption of the region while educating um, the whole community about being water wise. Since its inception back in 2016, the project's achieved long-term water saving goals with increased water efficiency, reduced water wastage through undetected leaks, nobody wants one of those, effective management of water restrictions and increased community knowledge of best practice water conservation measures. A save water, save money campaign coupled with a broad education approach and mandated my water registrations for concealed leak remissions, gave residents the ability to track their water usage, recognise quickly if there was indeed a leak and help them control their consumption and their costs. The success of this initiative is testament to innovative and out of the box thinking. The last of the finalists in this category is Tuan Reserve Cultural Burn Program, Sunshine Coast Council. As we become more aware of the significance of cultural burning, the knowledge has been applied to support Council's vision to be Australia's most sustainable region. Healthy, smart, creative is the logo. Now in its third year, the annual Tuan Cultural Burn is an important cultural learning event and pathway for fire and land management. The 200 hectare Tuan Reserve is on Gubby Gubby country and was acquired through Council's environmental levy. Council worked with a wide range of stakeholders, including representatives from Gubby Gubby and Jinnaburra traditional owners, indigenous rangers from southeast Queensland, Fire Sticks Alliance Indigenous Corporation and other fire practitioners and council staff. The program delivers on multiple levels, sustainability, environmental, cultural and economic impact, and continues to heal the land and its people through an ongoing commitment to sustainability and reconciliation. There are finalists. Let's now welcome Tim Fines Clinton of King and Company to the podium to present the Sustainability Award for Excellence. Hello, Tim. Welcome. No. On the trophy, Tim. On the trophy. Right. Thank you. <laughs> um, thanks, Kate. Uh, um, King & Company are a Brisbane-based uh, legal firm specialising in providing legal advice, court and other representation to Queensland councils throughout the state, um, from far away to the north and the northwest, down to here in the southeast corner and to the far, far west. Um, we, uh, it's, it's almost, local government is virtually, uh, takes up the entire uh, focus of our practice. So given that uh, connection with local government, which has been going on for many, many decades now, um, it is a no-brainer for us to be, and we have been for quite a significant period of time now, the LGMA's principal corporate partner. And for an, an <laughs> some period of time now, we're also the, have been the LGMA's landlord. Um, so we're all still getting on well, and uh, we're very uh, uh, grateful for the opportunity to be part of this afternoon's awards, and in particular, to uh, present the winner of this award, Alex Excellence in Sustainability. And the winner is Cairns Regional Council, Cairns Australia's Green Capital.
Unfortunately, Cairns can't be here this afternoon, so I'll be accepting the award on this its This is behalf. Tim's big moment. <laughs> Did you notice the hair sweep? So Tim is going to proudly pose with the award. We'll make sure that this photo heads north. Beautiful. Thank you, Isaac. Thanks, Pat. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Excellent work. Thank you very much. Congratulations to our Green Capital, Cairns Regional Council. And congratulations, of course, to all the finalists in that category. And um, thank you to King and Company and Tim for supporting the award. And it's a relief to know you're all getting along so well. That's great. Let's move on to our next category, which is excellence in collaboration. Collaboration. It can be tricky at times, especially if you're working on a really complex project with multiple parties, both internal and external to council. So bear that in mind. Our first finalist is Gladstone Regional Council with its economic transition roadmap. So I guess who better to tackle a once in a generation change to the energy sector head on than a resource council? Gladstone Regional Council has done this through its 10-year economic transition roadmap. Developed in partnership with the next economy, the roadmap is setting the benchmark for shifting away from fossil, fuel, fossil fuels and fossil fuels <laughs> and ma managing the impacts associated with new energy industries. The result of two years of research and extensive engagement that involved 220 community, government and industry stakeholders, the roadmap focuses on transition instead of energy industry closure and sets the Gladstone community up for success. The roadmap strategy ensures that regulations, planning, funding, training and infrastructure are all in place to meet the challenges of that transition. This roadmap transforms the conversation around shifting from fossil fuels, showcasing to the community and the industry how the region can leverage future economic growth and position itself as a leader <coughs> in renewable energy. The Council believes it's a clear path forward for Gladstone to navigate the changing energy sector, support industry and, most importantly, protect the community. The second of our finalists is Habitat Logs Project, Moreton Bay Regional Council. Gubby Gubby Traditional Owners Group and the Department of Transport and Main Roads have been brought together by the council in an initiative to salvage and repurpose culturally significant trees that were cleared as part of a major highway upgrade. The project pioneered a new approach to reusing felled trees that were identified by Gubby Gubby senior cultural representatives as having importance in caring for country. While they weren't sacred trees, the species and the age of the trees involved made them of particular significance to Gubby Gubby. Through this project, Gubby Gubby and the council have advanced the shared commitment to reconciliation, biodiversity, conservation, and Gubby Gubby's commitment to caring for country. The project demonstrates the importance of strong partnerships with traditional owners for sustainable outcomes. Our third finalist this afternoon, Mental Health Localised Initiative, Tablelands Regional Council. As we know, mental health is a growing concern. We've seen that with the state government actually setting up a, a new portfolio. And the Regional Council is stepping up to assist. They're driving a collaboration with organisations, service providers and community groups, focusing on the effects of isolation and loneliness, especially amongst the elderly and people with disability or chronic pain. Council worked with North Queensland Primary Health Network, the mental health subgroup of the Tablelands Interagency Group and community stakeholders to develop a range of initiatives including an Ageing Well Expo, Mental Health and Volunteerism Expo, a Mental Health Week primary school program, and Adult and Children Mental Health Service Map. The networks, initiatives, professional development and events established through the project are now embedded in the community and they will continue to evolve. 
our fourth finalist this afternoon. Another entry from Moreton Bay Regional Council entitled My Future in Moreton Bay. A free virtual career experience program has been developed by Council in response to industry feedback about the difficulty of sourcing and retaining workers. Council partnered with The Forage, which is an international leader in virtual work experience programs, to develop My Future in Moreton Bay. This is a first for an Australian local government. The program gives potential workers an advantage by providing them with suitable skills for a career in Moreton Bay long term while addressing talent shortages. Industry reps, including local companies and TAFE Queensland, helped inform the relevant topics, um, themes and tasks. The program works to match people to priority industry needs and it enables businesses to interview potential recruits who are already predisposed uh, to their industry. It'll help transform and modernise the region's economy and make it stand out in a crowded marketplace where talent is scarce and, of course, these days, um, mobile. Also making the finalist list this afternoon is the SWIM project, City of Logan. Very few of us, I'm sure, would dispute the importance of water safety awareness. We just need to look at the number of Learn to Swim programs at schools and pools right around the country. For Logan, though, many residents have missed this opportunity to learn to swim as children. So the City of Logan responded, and in collaboration with the Federal Department of Health, the Aqua English Project, Aqua Logan and the Ethic Communities Council of Queensland, they delivered the Swim Lo Logan project. It's a free learn to swim and water safety awareness program for migrants, refugees and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people aged 16 and over. The two year project taught 1,979 people how to swim by delivering 432 swimming lessons and 95 water safety awareness sessions in six different languages. Swim Logan also trained 13 lifeguards and swim teachers and they're now uh, able to teach others from their communities how to swim. The project is a powerful testament to the impact that local government and not-for-profit community organisations can have when all parties involved are passionate about working together on a common goal and serving the needs of the community. I would now like to welcome Jay Lancaster from the Department of State Development, Infrastructure, Local Government and Planning to introduce the Excellence in Collaboration Award. Here she comes. Welcome, Jay. Thanks very much, Kay. I've um, had the absolute pleasure of leading the local government department in, uh, for the last 12 months, and I've been absolutely blown away the, by the people that I've been working with, um, the mayors, the CEOs, and the council staff. You're all incredibly passionate people, and our uh, communities are much better because of people like you working in the local government sector. Now, those of you that I've worked with know that collaboration is my number one thing. I love it. I think that we, um, we go further um, when we do work together. So it's an absolute pleasure to be presenting this award today. Collaboration is also a big focus um, in our department to the point that one of our guiding principles is steer, uh, go further together and steer the way. And I can see from it the list of finalists that you've just talked through, Kay, that this is something that's also embodied um, in the local government sector. One of the ways that the state uh, is leading the way through collaboration is through the new Queensland uh, new industry development strategy, which was launched by the Deputy Premier uh, last Friday. The strategy is critical for how Queensland will pave the way for new industries to meet the growing demand for cleaner, greener and more responsibly sourced uh, products and services. The new industries uh, include renewable energy manufacturing, infrastructure development, critical mineral processing and manufacturing, battery industry development, green hydrogen, circular economy, and the bioeconomy. Now, I've also spoken to many council leaders um, recently who want to position their communities to be leaders in this space. They see the opportunity and want to seize it, and rightly so. But I've also heard from many who are very concerned. They are concerned that it could shift away, see a shift away from their traditional industries that have supported their communities for decades. So there needs to be an absolute balance. 
And to find this, we need to work together so we can support existing critical industries and take advantage of the opportunity for new industry. To achieve this, the state will be working closely with local government to develop regionally specific infrastructure and land use plans that align with the economic and social aspirations of each region to support the transition towards greener and more sustainable uh, industries. These industries are the future of Queensland and all levels of government need to collaborate together to make the most out of this opportunity. But another project I'd like to talk about is one being led by my team, and that is to review and identify opportunities to improve the sustainability of, local, uh, of our Indigenous local governments. Our Indigenous local governments face unique and complex situations compared to many of our other local governments. These councils are often geographically placed in rural and regional rem uh, remote locations and face real difficulties in attracting and retaining staff and are generally uh, solely reliant on the state and federal funding. These are issues that cannot be solved solely from, from George Street or William Street as we, we, we now stand. And we need to do more uh, than consult with our Indigenous local uh, government colleagues. We need to genuinely collaborate to co-design models with Indigenous local governments to increase their overall sustainability and improve delivery of essential services to these communities. There are two areas that we will work uh, and we'll examine to identify opportunities and develop options for. Firstly, that is in the water and wastewater area. These are critical needs of the community and how can we better support our Indigenous local governments to deliver, own and operate and maintain this important infrastructure. Secondly, the corporate service functions, including finance, asset management, procurement, government and human resources. We're looking to ways where we can better support these services in these communities. The Deputy Premier last week wrote to all of the Indigenous mayors to inform them of this project and the intention to commence engaging with councils in June 2023. The department is genuine about undertaking a considered collaboration uh, process and has engaged PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, Indigenous Consulting, PIC as we call them, to undertake research, consultation and the development of options uh, for this project. PIC is a certified Indigenous business which combines Indigenous expertise in understanding their unique and cultural needs with PwC's consulting capability in the areas of finance and infrastructure. I'd also like to give a shout out to the work underway for building the next round of So You Want to Be a Counselor training. Our training team has collaborated with a selection of existing counsellors, one of which is in a third row there, and if you haven't uh, seen the podcast, I would, uh, I would strongly encourage you to, to Google Brett de Chastel, uh, So You Want to Be a Counsellor. He did a great job, so thank you, Brett. That's had a number of hits internationally as well. Um, so the new training will be fit for purpose, better preparing candidates for their obligations during the election campaign and ensuring they understand what is involved with being a councillor. This training is being finalised now and will be ready for the opening of the nomination period which is expected to come in the coming months. So without further ado, shall we announce the winner? Yes, I think we should. And the winner for excellence and collaboration is Gladstone Regional Council Economic Transition Roadmap. That was worth the road trip, wasn't it? Excellent. Congratulations. Well done. Well done, Gladstone Regional Council. That's a big piece of work. Um, collaboration with 220 community government and industry stakeholders. That must have been interesting. Um, and a great outcome for the wider region. Congratulations to all our finalists and thank you again to the Department of Local Government and Jay, obviously a champion of collaboration. And everybody, don't forget to check out the podcast. Jay will have details a little later. Let's move on to excellence in community shaping. This explores the idea that governments shouldn't simply be echo chambers for existing community views, rather that they have the opportunity and perhaps even an obligation to use their knowledge and information to help shape those views and promote community wellbeing, sustainability and cohesion. Our first finalist in this category is Boulogne Shire Council. Do we have somebody from Boulogne here? We did, yes. Sorry, I don't think I gave you a shout out before. Um, 
the initiative is Business Improvement Scheme. Now, this is a multifaceted approach to business resilience, sustainability, and future growth. Council has implemented a three-year program of practical improvements and customised business mentoring and workshops aiming to build resilience. It's also encouraging businesses to look at ways to be more sustainable and enable their growth into the future. The program is tailored specifically for each business and their needs. It's provided the community with the tools and the information that they need to grow and create positive change that eventually affects everybody in the community. Our second finalist is Health Services Transaction, Western Downs Regional Council. Go Western Downs. <laughs> this is what these guys did. They and Southern Cross Care Queensland, SCCQ, have come together to secure stronger, more sustainable health services for the region. The council successfully transferred its aged care homes and community services to accredited aged care provider, SCCQ, that happened in April last year. Now, the collaboration needed to make sure that more than 80 council staff kept their positions as part of that agreement was, I'm told, second to none. Council is proud that its staff members now have improved career opportunities since becoming part of the SCCQ team. The transfer has significantly improved sustainability of the Western Downs, ensuring that residents feel confident about their health services and they'll be far more likely to remain in their communities. The initial financial cost to the budget was pretty significant, but Council feels the long-term economic investment is well worth it. And importantly, local ratepayers aren't bearing the financial cost of recruiting and retaining staff at the rural health services. So the transfer has been an excellent result for the financial sustainability of Council's budget. Our third finalist, Kids in Action Program, Sunshine Coast Council. This program has been pioneered by the Council. It's an environmental education initiative that's been operating since 2012. Aimed at students aged between 8 and 15, the program builds leadership and active citizenship skills in environmental management through peer-to-peer -peer learning experiences. Each year, students explore and they express their learnings and teachings through three key annual events. An Environmental Projects Day, a Kids Teaching Kids Conference, and a Kia Roadshow, a different environmental theme has been adopted every year. Over two thirds of Sunshine Coast schools have taken part in the program, that's impressive. That's over three and a half thousand students who've been reached. Thousands more teachers, adults, and community members have attended KIA events over the years. The program has and continues to deliver positive environmental, social, cultural, and economic outcomes for the Sunshine Coast community. And the last finalist in this category, City of Logan, which is also focused on the environment with its Eco Forum. The Council has strengthened its commitment to community environmental engagement by enhancing the Logan Eco Forum and Eco Survey. Now, this program has been around since 2017, promoting environmental awareness, building relationships through collaboration, and creating capacity for positive action across the city. Critical to success is the engagement that's guided Council in shaping and improving future environment capacity building opportunities. Public feedback apparently in 2020 led to significant changes, including improved community experience, delivery methods, and environmental outcomes. And this saw a big increase in attendance with over 1,100 people taking part in the series of events relating to the Eco Forum. That was last year. Council's looking forward to another big year with the annual Logan Eco Forum and Eco Survey happening actually next month. So congratulations to all of our finalists in this category, community shaping, so important. Sponsors of this category, Preston Law, sadly can't join us this year. It's my pleasure to call on LGMA Board Director, Deborah Howe. Deborah is going to present the award on behalf of Preston Law. Welcome, Deborah.
Thanks, Kay. <coughs> Preston Law couldn't be here tonight, and I don't have a presentation from them. What I will say is the LGMA is very grateful for their support of our organisation. Congratulations to the finalists. Uh, the winner is, I feel a bit like the Logies. The winner of the excellence in community shaping is Sunshine Coast Council with the Kids in Action program. <laughs> I thought there would have been a busload from the Sunshine Coast. <laughs> Only two of you. <laughs> well done, Lucas. Well done. Congratulations to Sunshine Coast Council Kids in Action Program. A great project, uh, well done, going since 2012, so reaching a lot of kids along the way. Congratulations, as usual, to all of our finalists. It's a tough competition and a very diverse range of entries, all having a really positive impact on community. And um, as Deborah said, Preston Law, we very much appreciate their support over the years. They've been a platinum partner for many, many years. So thank you to Preston Law if you're watching. Uh, word should get back to you that we are very grateful. Okay, let's move on now to excellence in teamwork. We all know a group of people pulling together for a common goal can achieve so much more than those working alone. A team is important too because it helps to have other people to blame if things go wrong. <clears throat> Once again, Queensland councils have demonstrated how good teams deliver for their communities. So the finalists in this category are the 2022 Flood Response and Recovery Ipswich City Council. A year and a bit after the devastating floods of early last year, the Ipswich community is well on the road to recovery, despite more than 5,000 insurance claims, 6,000 tonnes of landfill, 101 road closures, 600 homes, and 300 businesses being impacted. 25% of environmental rehabilitation projects are complete, and nearly 30% of asset recovery projects have been completed. So the region's ability to, to bounce back from an event like this stems not from its experience, not only, I should say, from its experience of a long history of natural disasters, but also from the ability, obviously, to coordinate response and recovery efforts as a team. Council employees, state government reps and agencies, community organisations, volunteers, and the local recovery and resilience group all focus their combined efforts on supporting the devastated community. Council volunteers manage this evacu the evacuation centre, coordinating community groups, charities and local businesses. They provided shelter and facilities to more than 400 people. That was at the peak of the floods. More than 930 community members registered through Volunteering Queensland to support the massive clean-up with Council again coordinating those efforts. The Australian Defence Force also committed more than 450 personnel to support the clean-up operations, again coordinated <coughs> excuse me, by Council. Council's also been recognised by the Inspector General of Emergency Management for its effectiveness. Well done. Our next finalist, Budrum Village Park, Sunshine Coast Council. Now, over 10 years in the making, the Budrum Village Park project began in 2010 when Council purchased 3.4 hectares at Budrum Mountain to create a community parkland. Then in 2016, they bought another 4.8 hectares nearby, linking previously disconnected environmental areas to create a 17 hectare biodiversity nature corridor leading from the park. The community engagement and stakeholder partnership management during this project has been key to successfully shaping what was a long-term vision. The mountaintop park area was completed late last year. It includes a village green, event and social gathering spaces, 
seating nooks, a playground, and meandering pathways and revegetation, all with spectacular elevated views to the coast. The adjacent biodiversity nature corridor has created a significant environmental legacy. Council and community teamwork here, delivering on the vision of creating a place of spectacle, nature, tranquility, peace and activity. Our third finalist, Delegations Review, the City of Logan. Now, you're with me here, delegations may not sound very sexy, <laughs> but they are the grease that keeps the cogs of local government turning. And the City of Logan project to update its suite of delegations and authorizations and to review how legislative powers are exercised has provided plenty of lubrication and improved council's <laughs> government practices. A project team liaised with key branch stakeholders to ensure the delegations were accurate and relevant. They concurrently tested and refined the software solution through to implementation. The software has automated data on legislative powers into a single place. Thank goodness for that. Making things easier for staff. It's hoped the accessibility will improve the understanding of staff and improve the culture and quality of decision making. Also, an holistic communication strategy was rolled out. Regular updates and information, e-learning modules, software demonstration and briefing sessions providing further grease to smooth decision making. The last finalist in this category, Whitsunday Disaster Coordination Centre Team, Whitsunday Regional Council. On the 15th of January this year, the Disaster Coordination Centre team responded to the severe weather event, Nimbosis. Simple translation, as I'm sure you're all aware, means a lot of rain. The team worked together operating the Coordination Centre and two places of refuge in Bowen and Proserpine and responding to flash floods that inundated with this record rainfall. Nimbosis closed 52 local and state roads. And I'm sure you'll remember seeing the images of people, residents and travellers stranded on the Bruce Highway, some stuck there for three days. Despite the challenges, the team made sure that residents and visitors were kept safe and aware of what was happening in the situation. As you'd imagine, working in a disaster coordination centre can be stressful and emotionally taxing. So team members showed support by always checking in with each other and they demonstrated empathy and compassion for those directly affected by the disaster. The successful response is a testament to the importance of teamwork and effective communication during emergencies. The work done by the team had a significant impact on the community and their safety. Well done. Celebrating teamwork, it's my pleasure to introduce the sponsor of this category, Daniel Morosky from Gaydens. Daniel, there you are. Welcome. Thanks very much, Kay, and uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, Gaydens is certainly uh, very proud of its association with the LGMA and is very pleased uh, to be here. Uh, those of you who recognise me in the room may not be so pleased to see me, given my practice. Um, is largely crisis management, so to you that means things like natural disasters, coroner's inquests, or perhaps um, triple C inquiries. So I got a little bit concerned when you I started talking about- I thought you were gonna say you were a divorce lawyer. No, no. I, <laughs> when you started talking about, started talking about greasing the wheels there, I got a bit, uh, a bit concerned. But um, look, enough about, enough about uh, Gaydens and what I do. I'm, uh, I'm keen to, to celebrate tonight and an excellence in teamwork. And I thought I'd take a slightly different slant at what uh, you know, teamwork means and excellence means. We all work, no doubt, in excellent teams and we recognise that and certainly may play in or support some excellent sporting teams, for example. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about teamwork, putting uh, my hat on as the manager of the mighty under six uh, gold rugby union team that my son plays in down at Taylor Bridge. So for those of you who know 
Um, Brisbane, it's a cute little club just the other side of the Walter Taylor Bridge in Graceful. Um, and, you know, as you can imagine, a group of five-year-old boys who've never been involved in a team before being thrown together for the last five weeks, there's certainly been a lot of key learnings, uh, <laughs> key observations about what teamwork means to them. So I thought I'd share a couple of you. Some of them may well resonate to the parents out there or, in fact, those who um, work in some dysfunctional teams. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the first one is uh, working as a team can actually be quite rewarding and a lot of fun. So uh, it's amazing when the coach tells the kids that they need to do something like pass the ball to their teammate and he'll score a try, or if you all stand in a defensive line, guess what, the opposition <coughs> may not score a try. And to just see that in action and see the cogs working and the ball gets passed, it gets shared, and to just see the joy in their faces when they get something wrong, you would have all seen it. That's it's a lot of fun. So let's remember that teamwork can always be fun. Uh, but of course, the other thing to do in a team is play to your strengths. Uh, and one of the things that we are lucky enough to have in our team is we have two very large and very fast boys. Uh, and we, uh, I did call them the mighty bull sharks before. They've scored 40 tries in um, eight games, and I think those two boys have scored 39 of those 40 tries. <laughs> um, but their team are very good at recognising, OK, well, we've got the ball, where's, where's Lockie or where's Joe? We need to get the ball to them because we'll win if we do that. So they're very good at that, um, which is an important lesson. You know, if you've got those strong members in your team, be sure to, um, to lean on them and use them. Uh, but the other thing that uh, we should remember when you're playing in a team is you won't get very far unless your teammates are with you. Now, you might have noticed I'm um, six foot six, so I was a slight humble brag when I was talking about a tall kid in the, uh, that's one of my uh, boys, is, is one of the star players, so I have um, reminded him, or rather his mother has reminded him very strongly that he needs to be inclusive of his teammates. So he is very good uh, at now, looking for his teammates when he gets open, encouraging them, all that kind of fun stuff. And he learned the hard way recently um, a couple of his teammates got a little bit bored with what was going on and someone else stealing all the glory. So they um, were found sort of 50 metres away from the ball, hands in their pockets, sort of kicking at the, um, at the flowers or the weeds or whatever was on the ground. And they learnt very quickly that five on seven wasn't much fun. And so there was a lot of encouragement to get their teammates back playing. And uh, I can certainly tell you that they were all overjoyed with a little bit of bribery from their parents um, to see them back playing as part of the team. Um, the other lesson that I think um, those in teams, and, and there'll be a number of parents out here, is everyone needs to take their turn at rolling up their sleeves and, and doing some of the dirty work. And of course, by that I mean that horrid jersey rotation roster. Um, so we've been very lucky in Brisbane over the last five weeks. We haven't had much rain on a Saturday, but no doubt I've jinxed myself. So when the Morosky uh, rotation comes round, I'll be greeted by a mud bath and we'll go from there. Um, looking forward to the laundry that day. Uh, and look, the final one, and, and part of why we're here tonight as part of a team, is make sure you celebrate the wins. So to a group of five-year-olds, that usually means a bucket of oranges or a packet of snakes or red frogs or something afterwards. Uh, but for those of you uh, here this evening, it means something else. We've got some great awards. We're going to have some fun celebrating afterwards. So look, I'll leave it there, and I'll just uh, now announce the winner so that they can get ready to celebrate for uh, this evening's Excellence in Teamwork Award. All right, and the winner is the City of Logan Delegations Review. Woo. Is there uh, any representatives from Logan here at all? No. Well, come <laughs> on do. down. Well done. What a, what a team. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. There you go. One of you gets this and one of you gets that one. Congratulations. City of Logan winning the excellence in teamwork dare I say, for greasing the wheels one last time. <laughs> and I'm sure our environmental reps will get that to the appropriate people. Congratulations. And thank you very much. And thank you. Teamwork makes the dream work. And who would have thought a crisis lawyer could be so engaging <laughs> with, your, with your stories? I'm sure that Lockie and Joe 
Those little ones will catch up with them one day and sort them out. But, but good luck, Daniel, and thank you very much for your support and um, your great storytelling. Okay, time to move on now to Excellence in Innovation. And this is another very hotly contested award and traditionally demonstrates that innovation can come in many shapes and sizes. Over the years, it's included social programs, disaster responses, engagement approaches, and technological innovation. So let's see who the finalists are this time around. The first comes from Carpentaria Shire Council, AI flood detection. Now, Council watched on as surrounding regions were left with dead camera hardware assets after a number of camera op uh, providers left the industry. So it became clear that a self-managed camera network was key to cutting costs and improving long-term asset management. So, Council approached the Local Government Association of Queensland to assist with the deployment of a self-managed camera network to monitor road conditions. Working with Council, the LGAQ developed an AI supervisor agent that automatically notifies Council when flooding is detected. This artificial intelligence method is now being used to automatically detect flooding over roads. That is, as you would imagine, significantly reducing costs, it's increasing efficiency, and it's providing new communication and methods to uh, residents and regional road users. So, where flood assessments would previously have taken something like 10 hours of travel time, the automated assessment means that council officers can now get on with other high priority tasks during a disaster. The next is Ask Morty, Data Concierge, Morton Bay Regional Council. What is a data concierge, I hear you ask? Well, Ask Morty provides usable data for small business owners to help them make evidence-based business decisions and better plan for growth. Council partnered with Tech Connect, uh, Tech Connect IT Solutions to develop this program. Morty breaks down complex 2021 census data and Queensland government population projections into easy to use curated demographic data. It identifies suburbs in the region with the largest number of people that perhaps manage, uh, match the business's key characteristics now and into the future, such as age, gender, home ownership, work status, industry, and income levels. The chatbot's easy customer interaction, simple question and answer design, and instant results make it an accessible and valuable tool. There are no technical skill or data literacy is required. That's a relief. The best news is it's free, so there's no need to slip Morty a $20 note. <laughs> the third finalist is Landholder Support Program, Rockhampton Regional Council. The Rookwood Weir Landholder Support and Grants Program was the first business support program in Queensland to connect, develop and build agricultural business plans with landholders. The program connected stakeholders who'd benefit from construction of Sunwater's Rookwood Weir on the Fitzroy River. Advance Rockhampton, a department of the Regional Council, helped landholders in the region with access to the program's financial and technical resources, including outreach and engagement, technical assistance and collaboration. The novel method has created new service delivery standards for high stakes engagement. Overall, Advance Rockhampton played a leading role in making sure landholders were able to access the resources and support that they needed to make the most of the new water storage facility. The fourth finalist, Sunshine Coast Council again, with Malulabar Foreshore Revitalisation Project. This project demonstrates the technologies being employed to in reinvent the community engagement process. The multi-stage revitalisation project is transforming Malulabar's foreshore, increasing public beachfront parkland by 40%. Groundbreaking virtual reality tools far beyond the standard community engagement approach 
have been developed. We're talking innovative 3D technology, which allowed the community to get a real feel for two distinctly different designs for stage two of the project. The public were able to take an immersive tour by simply scanning one of those QR codes. Supported by Council's High Tech Hive online survey platform, the program's been recognised as an outstanding success, enabling the Council to make community-informed decisions. And last but by no means least, Tempo, an innovative recruitment campaign courtesy of Fraser Coast Regional Council. Um, skill shortages, as we mentioned earlier, are the bane of businesses both large and small. With no end in sight to the issue, Council came up with a solution to increase the skills of the local workforce and make opportunities available to disadvantaged members of the community. Tempo was designed in 2021 to build a skilled and engaged in-house workforce, catering to Council's contingency labour requirements. It also aims to provide a pathway to employment for disadvantaged job seeker groups on the Fraser Coast and deliver an efficient and financially sustainable temporary workforce resourcing model by reducing dependency on external labour hire agencies. Tempo is in direct contrast to the usual out-of-the-box recruitment campaigns, which primarily target experience and qualifications. Instead, the campaign attracts candidates who are immediately available, tick, and motivated to work, tick, tick. It recognises that qualifications and or experience are not the be all and end all of good employees. The Tempo campaign has redefined what attracting the best employee means and it's reflective of Council's culture and employee values, trust, respect, accountability, initiative, service and teamwork, which comes together as traits. Congratulations to all of our finalists in this category and returning to the stage now to present this award is Tim Fines Clinton of King & Company. Welcome back, Tim. Let's hope you don't have to be photographed solo again. I won't muck about on this one. Uh, the winner of the Excellence in Innovation is... Fraser Coast Regional Council, Tempo and Innovative Recruitment Campaign. From the sound of that cheer, I thought you guys might have hired a minibus. You've got supporters here? And Plen yes, <laughs> lots of supporters. Well done, Fraser Coast I'm Council. A great initiative and thank you again, Tim, to King & Company solicitors for supporting not only the Innovation Award, but so much that LGMA, that you do for LGMA. Um, including conferences, webinars, executive management program, on and on it goes. Thank you very much, Tim. We're moving on now to excellence in workplace well-being. We all know that our greatest wealth is health. So not surprisingly, this is a focus area for many councils who've recognised happy, healthy employees are more productive and deliver better quality results. The finalists are Ipswich City Council with inspiring leaders. Ooh, go Ipswich. Um, and every business would agree that if you want healthy employees, you need capable managers. For Ipswich City Council, this has led to a new approach for supporting the wellbeing and professional development of its leaders. More than 100 employees have engaged in the in-house designed and facilitated Inspiring Leaders course, developed to provide leaders with the confidence and the capabilities to improve overall employee experience, well-being, 
and performance. Leaders undertake six-week challenges based around the topics of understanding leadership, quality conversations, performance planning, developing others, change leadership, and safety leadership. The first grads are finishing this year, and the program's already showing promising results. The annual employee survey indicates, indicates strong positive shifts in satisfaction and a feeling of being supported. Inspiring leaders is ensuring the long-term sustainability of the program and ability to ensure learning is cycled back, so importantly, into the program for continuous improvement over time. <clears throat> Our next finalist is Wellbeing Through Adventure, Redland City Council. Woohoo! Go Redland. Safety at heart is the council's motto here, putting people first. The 12 month Wellbeing Through Adventure program was designed with the worker in mind to help them focus on their health and wellbeing at work and in their personal lives. A choose your own adventure approach saw participants embark on a fun adventure through 11 monthly destinations, each with its own wellbeing related theme, information and activities. Those destinations could be a group challenge, it could be a yoga class, undertaking health screening or joining a book club. Employees gained access to a wide range of resources and support to help them achieve their goals, which could be a headstand. The program generated more than 400 interactions on Council's intranet and 200 views for each Yammer post. Several social events were attended by between 10 and 300 employees. The program has sparked a longer lasting cultural shift with a surge in the uptake of other health and wellbeing programs offered by council. For instance, the employee assistance program up from 2% to 10% and wellbeing and career coaching increased by 100%. Well done. Our final finalist is Quilpie Shire Council with Workplace Wellbeing. Welcome Quilpie. Regarded as one of the friendliest outback towns in Queensland, and the Shire Council now boasts being one of the happiest workforces. The latest survey shows 98% of employees are happy and they feel safe and healthy in their workplace. Feel Good Friday with trademark shirts and limited edition Beyond Blue aerials for vehicles have been introduced to support workplace mental health. The council programs include subsidized gym memberships, annual flu jabs, advice on superannuation, sal salary packaging and insurance, and an annual staff wellbeing week with free skin, hearing, blood pressure and blood glucose checks, healthy cooking workshops, the seven habits of healthy people course, and laughter clinics. When they're done laughing, they go walking. The 10,000 Steps program has been undertaken along with annual charity fundraising. That saw council donate over $180,000 with 50,000 donated to local charities. Quilpie's communities also benefit through, ex through access to specialist appointments, as well as being invited to events like the Wellbeing Week free dinner and comedy night. This all added up to low staff turnover and ongoing low levels of absenteeism despite COVID. Well done, Quilpie. Jonathan Mamerill from NB Employment Law is with us. Jonathan's going to join us to present the Workplace Wellbeing Award. Welcome, Jonathan. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Kay. I appreciate that. Um, I think we can all agree that the, uh, the workplace is going through some various changes. Don't we all agree? Yeah. Um, so, obviously, one of the biggest changes being the uh, psychosocial risks and hazards changes with the Work Health and Safety Act. Um, and of course, we have uh, a big increase in unfair dismissal claims, joint protections claims, workers' compensation. So there has been this uh, glut of movement in the workplace. But what I've also noticed is that um, uh, councils in particular have really taken a front foot approach. Um, myself and the MB Employment Law team have really undertaken quite a number of uh, people management training workshops 
focusing on some of these changes and what I'm seeing is that there's a lot of um, programs, uh, some of those ones that were actually uh, recognised today, uh, that are going across councils and I think it's a, it's a great achievement for uh, councils in general as trying to focus on being an employer, an employer of choice, focusing on wellbeing and um, in particular focusing on mental illness and mental health. So, uh, without ado, um, I want to uh, present the uh, uh, Workplace Wellbeing Award. Oh, that's over there. Yeah. There's always a silence between, isn't it? So, suspense. Okay, the winner for Excellence in Workplace Wellbeing is Redland City Council. <laughs> Wellbeing through adventure. Congratulations. Whoa. I think um, camera guy might get over here because it's quite a few of them, yeah. Wellbeing through adventure. Adventure before dementia. It's my motto. Well done to Redland City Council. Brilliant. It sounded like a great program. Thank you to NB Employment Law for supporting the award. Congratulations to all our finalists and their efforts at supporting the well-being of their workforces. As Jonathan said, so important. In my book, you can't beat a good laugh and a long sleep, preferably not at work. Let's move on now and go above and beyond. Now, while we earlier incorporated the Young Manager of the Year Award, the Above and Beyond Award is usually the only one that goes to an individual. The nominee has to be somebody who has indeed gone above and beyond their stated duties to deliver added service to their community or to their council. And that means, of course, no additional payment and their work is most likely self-generated. Please welcome back to join me on stage, Matt Hogno of Brighter Super. Matt is going to proudly support, or well, like you, you have already proudly supported, this Above and Beyond um, Award. And he's going to let us know who has gone above and beyond this year, Matt. Thank you, Kay. Um, I think I'll also just jump straight into this one, so we... Uh Get past the anticipation. So, um, it gives me great pleasure to announce that the winner for Above and Beyond from Sunshine Coast Council is Hannah Maloney. Congratulations, Hannah. Okay, as Hannah makes her way to receive her award, let me tell you why she's the 2023 Above and Beyond Award recipient. As the Community and Animal Education Supervisor at Sunshine Coast Council, Hannah sees what happens when families are not responsible for their pets. Seeing an opportunity to break the cycle and not finding any resources um, to support that goal, Hannah went above and beyond to create her own. She wrote a book to educate children about pet ownership. When Sammy met Sonny, follows a boy called Sammy who wants to improve, or rather he wants to prove to his parents that he is responsible enough to own a pet. The book has been successfully promoted through Book Week in schools and libraries, it's been well received on social media. Writing a book is not an easy thing, ladies and gentlemen, but Hannah had a plan and uh, she set about completing a course on writing children's books. Then she took the time to map her content um, to the prep and year one education program. All proceeds of the book go back to educating children about 
animal safety. Well done, Hannah. Thank you for stepping up and filling a gap that you identified in your community. Anna, congratulations. Do you have a few words for us? And I want to know where people can get a copy of the book too. Um, this is awesome. Uh, so <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I would just like to thank um, the incredible organisation that I work for, Sunshine Coast Council, and um, my managers, Tanya Esser and Shanagat Jacobs, uh, for believing in me and just unleashing, letting me um, be able to just use different sorts of uh, resources to reach um, kids, the community, and keeping um, keeping our kids safe, keeping dogs safe. And um, I have to mention my husband and my family because um, I had to blindfold him while I read the story a million times to make sure it made sense. <laughs> so um, I wondered where you were going with that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably shouldn't have said that part. Um, you can actually. <laughs> Um, you can purchase the book um, from Sunshine Coast Council um, from our webpage. So you can go, you can give us a call, we can send one out. Um, you, can, you can get it from uh, the customer contact office. So, um, Is it available yeah. in libraries yet? If not, why not? Uh, you can actually borrow them from the libraries Good. at the moment. So, right. But um, if you want, to, want some for your council libraries, you can you give us a call and we can send you out some. <laughs> So thanks. Well, we've got to sell it. Yeah. Excellent. Well done, Anna. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Congratulations again, Hannah Maloney. Above and beyond, thank you to Matt and Bright as Super for supporting this award so well once again. Ladies and gentlemen, we're counting down. We're getting thirsty. I'm drunk half a jug of water here. Um, we're on to the Australasian Management Challenge. But before we go there, let me tell you what happened in the Rural Challenge events. Three challenges were held late last year. South Burnett hosted the Southern Queensland event. Um, hometown Advantage was apparently at play with the Bunya NVPs winning the event. Second place went to Southern Downs Regional Council's Good Grade, and the Bright Sparks from Western Downs Regional Council came in third. The North Queensland Challenge took place in Mount Isa, and again, a host council team, Team Vila, took out the event. Central Queensland Challenge, hosted by the Beef Cattle or Rockhampton, saw the trophy go to the Central Highlands team, the Highland Gems. Second place getters were the Livingstones from Livingston Shire Council, bringing up the rear the Cap Coast Cohort, also from Livingston Shire Council. Well done to all of those teams who took part in last year's Rural Management Challenge. <laughs> Registrations for this year's events are open, so you better get in now to secure a spot because we could be announcing your name this time next year. Now, let's get to the Australasian Challenge, which took place in Brisbane just last month. Ten teams taking on a plethora of tasks and challenges. JLT happily sponsored the prestigious challenge once again, and I invite, invite Nathan Turner to say a few words about the event. Welcome, Nathan. Thank you, Kay. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, JLT Public Sector has, for many years, very proudly supported the Australasian Management Challenge, both nationally and locally here in Queensland. We are extremely pleased to be able to do that again in 2023 and are very grateful to be involved in helping to foster the development of future leaders within local government and to continue to support Queensland's councils to build thriving local communities. On behalf of JLT Public Sector and all of your JLT Public Sector colleagues, please accept this sincere and hearty congratulations to all involved in the 2023 LGMA Queensland Management Challenge. And I'll now hand back to Kay. Thank you, Nathan, and thank you to JLT once again. Now, 
again, before we move along, I've been asked to elaborate on a few details as to why Challenge Day was so particularly tough this year with the encounters at the Challenge Council, Council which was called the City of Guildford. Imagine this, a social media bomb dropped the day before the opening of a multi-million dollar sports facility. Staff refusing to return to work post COVID, a late running open day program, an urgent need to address issues associated with an underutilized community center, waste management issues, never pleasant, a conflicted councillor with a lawnmower business. <laughs> oh, I'd like to know more about that and a library patron prone to keeling over unexpectedly. It looked like a day in a typical council, I'm told, around the state. No mention here about the presence of the media. You managed to keep it all very quiet. But the teams were under the pump and they worked very hard to push through the tasks that were set. And I also do want to acknowledge the 2023 Challenge facilitators, Pauline Peel and Michael Limerick. Michael is going to come up on the stage and announce the finalists and the winners of the Queensland 2023 Australasian Management Challenge. Please welcome Michael Limerick and well done on what I understand was a very difficult task. Thanks, Kate. Yeah, I think it was one of the more difficult uh, years. I'm sure all of you who participated would, would agree. Um, I'll have to say the marking was easy this year. I just gave it to chat GPT and went and played golf. <laughs> but, <you know. laughs> no, seriously, though, I think um, one of the things I love about management challenges, it really focuses on the future and gets people to, to think about um, strategic challenges. And there's actually a lot of talk about AI this year. I think everyone's worried about it replacing their jobs. but. Uh, um, I know I do, I do a bit of local law drafting for councils and actually the other day, just as a test, I got it to draft a um, chat GPT to draft a animal noise nuisance local law. It actually did a pretty good job, so um, it lacked a bit of nuance, I think, but um, I'm just wondering, yeah, um, people won't be too disappointed probably if there's um, a few less lawyers replaced by AI, but... I tell you what, but, they're coming for newsreaders. <laughs> oh, I think so. but. Uh, I do think most of your jobs are safe, though. I think local government is the, the level of government closest to the community, and I don't think um, AI does empathy very well. Um, I also think um, having... With Paulie and I have done the management challenge for, for five years now. One of the things I really love about it is the, the level of innovation and creativity that people show, um, and we've seen a lot of that just today in the, uh, the, the projects that have been nominated for awards. And, again, I don't think AI can replace that sort of human um, endeavour. Uh, and, and also the level of passion that people have for their communities comes through really clearly in the, in the management awards. So, so I think the, the future of local government's in really safe hands with um, some of those aspiring young managers. Thank you again for the opportunity to be involved this year. It's, um, it's always very energising and, um, and affirming to be involved in, in that. And uh, looking forward to um, announcing the winners. So we're going to start, I think, in reverse order. Yes, if you could go backwards, that'd be great. Third place. Third place. I'm told the result was pretty close. It certainly was. Mm. And third place goes to Ipswich City Council with Ipswich Creative Crew. <laughs> Congratulations to the creative crew. And Michael tells me that your task two was the highlight of the challenge for him. A very funny video, apparently, promoting a five bin solution for council. It's, um, it's gone viral, it's a must see. So <laughs> chat to the ladies afterwards. Well done to the creative crew. The, the team coined the term bingicate to teach people to use the right recycling bins and ah. waste bins, which I thought was very clever. I'm going to use that It'll one. catch on. <laughs> OK, coming in a close second was 
Here's Second place in this year's management challenge was Noosa Council, Noosa Sparkies. <laughs> Good to see a big turnout from Noosa Council. Well done to the Noosa Sparkies. Um, I'm told you lived up to your name, but you were the judges' favourite team because of your spirit and your energy. Mind you, you took your time coming down the stairs. <laughs> that was despite spending half the challenge lying on the floor with your heads together. And we'll talk about that a bit later. I'm intrigued. Well done to the Noosa Sparkies. I think they just want to work for Google or something, you know, and lie around in beanbags all day. It was a very relaxed atmosphere sure in their team. And actually, that's reason. a great, great thing um, for anyone doing the management challenge. I think having fun is probably one of the secrets. So, well done, Denusa. Okay. Now, for the final uh, announcements. For the winner of this year's management challenge. And these guys are going to head to Adelaide. Yes, for the Nationals this year, representing Queensland. So congratulations go to Central Highland Regional Council, Highland Gems. <laughs> Congratulations from Central Highlands Regional Council, the Highland Gems. I'm a little disappointed there were no kilts. <laughs> oh, relieved. Okay, Lucas is going to capture this historic moment and you guys off to the finals in Adelaide to represent Queensland. I've heard this um, challenge is referred to as competitive paperwork with a good dose of trauma <laughs> attached to it. Oh, do you think they should? Think they yes, should. yes, absolutely, please. Thanks, say a Kay. Few words. Just very quickly, the reason I do want to say something is um, both Tanya and myself weren't participating in the award in the actual day, so um, we're here representing Central Highlands Regional Council. And we're extremely proud, extremely happy um, for the team that were down there. So just want to acknowledge Rebecca McDonald, Brenton Judge, Caleb Bonner, Rachel McFarlane, Connor Quinn Fitzgerald. They were ably um, mentored by Beck Brosnan and proudly supported by Cherie Chant and Tash Todd. So thank you, congratulations team. They're all at home watching and uh, can't be prouder of you, so well done. More well, teamwork and collaboration in action there. Congratulations again to the Highland Gems. Thank you to Michael and Nathan. Congratulations to all of our teams, to the mentors, supporters, to JLT for their continued support of the challenge. Most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. That's the end of our formalities this afternoon. Congratulations to all the winners and the finalists. Just as importantly, congratulations to all the nominees. You've all helped highlight and importantly celebrate some of the wonderful achievements of Queensland local government over the past 12 months. Let's put our hands together for all of our nominees. <laughs> the Awards for Excellence are going to be back next year, so please put your thinking caps on about your nominations. It's most important that we again acknowledge our supporters. The award's not possible without our partners, King & Company solicitors, uh, Brighter Super, Preston Law, the Department of State Development and Infrastructure, Local Government and Planning, NB Employment Law, Gaydens and JLT. We'll say goodbye to those joining us online. Stay tidy, enjoy your wins if you've had one. <laughs> Here in Brisbane, we have the opportunity, as I mentioned earlier, for a cool drink, canapes and a chat on the on the Queensland Terrace. You've been a fabulous audience. Thank you for your warmth. 
Um, a quick request if our awards finalists could please collect your certificates and have a happy snap. Lucas will oblige at the LGMA stand in the cocktail reception area. You'll see it out there. Please, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your evening. On behalf of LGMA, soak up your celebrations and we look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you.